Good afternoon and thank you all for coming out today. There's a girl dressed in all black from head to toe. She pulls down her sleeves to cover up her scars. One might ask, why is she doing this? She has a voice. Why can't she just tell us what's wrong? She wants to speak, yet doesn't know how. She wants to share, but falls to the ground. Look over here, a boy who's overweight and bullied in all his classes. He too has a voice, yet he doesn't speak up. How does one voice in a city of pain speak up and actually be heard? Through completing classes that I have taken that have developed my skill of speech or public speaking, a thought or idea came to mind. How do teens communicate to others of what they feel or need. I say communicate because in order to share effectively what you want to say, you need to know how to communicate. So just what does the word communication actually mean? Communication is the process of expressing your emotions, behavior, and attitudes in a way that others can comprehend. Communication touches many aspects of our lives, such as our emotions, behavior, and attitudes, and in doing so, it can further your ability to strengthen hopes, dreams, and desires. Today, I would like to share why communication is so important in today's society and how we can help teenagers effectively communicate to others. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, in 2007, suicide was the third leading cause of death for young people ages 15 to 24. The Centers for Disease Control reported that 60% of high school age students have actually thought about committing suicide and around 9% of them have tried killing themselves at least once. The National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey in 2007 and 2008 reported that obesity now affects 17% of all children and adolescents in the United States. This is triple the rate from just one generation ago. These statistics were shocking to me at first. Then I realized teens that are at risk of suicide or obesity have a voice too, yet they need help on how to use that voice. Effective communication is very important but especially in today's society. With technology becoming more advanced every day, communication is becoming harder. You might say to yourself, no, through Facebook I can communicate to so-and-so who lives in another country. The question is, would you be able to communicate to that person effectively, face-to-face, -face, or even talk on the phone for that matter? Personally, it would be hard for me. I have a friend who lives in California. And we have been friends since we were in the second grade. I moved from California to Texas when I was in the seventh grade, and we lost contact for a couple of years. Then, randomly, I texted her, and we got to talking, and now we text almost every day. Now, one day, we were texting back and forth for a couple of hours, and my mom stopped me and said, why don't you just pick up the phone and call her? I thought about it for a second, and I said, no, that would be weird. I haven't talked to her in years. See, the idea of actually speaking made me uneasy. Even if the person is your best friend, it is still very hard to talk to people both comfortably and effectively. Many teens want to communicate, but they don't know how to. Therefore, they communicate in ways they do know how to. Whether that be cutting themselves, starving themselves, anger, depression, suicide, and so much more. As a teen, you really are in an awkward spot. You're in between 10 and 20. You want to be respected, yet you're still a minor in maturing. Often we may see teens crying out in extreme ways to be heard, saying things such as, can anybody hear me? Is there anybody who really cares what I have to say? However, if they cannot effectively communicate what it is they want to say, then it will be very hard to get people to listen. As a teen myself, I have been in the position that most teenagers are. 
A few years ago, I hated speaking in public and even had trouble making new friends because I was scared to talk to others. However, I was fortunate enough to have an opportunity to learn how to effectively communicate through 4-H. H offers a program called the Toastmasters Youth Leadership Class, which teaches youth how to give a speech and other various topics. But most importantly, I learned how to effectively communicate. I enjoyed that speech so much, that, that class so much, that I have now taken it twice. And it was also through 4-H that I was able to hear about TEDx Youth at Fort Worth and able to participate. Through these classes, I have gained the ability to express myself through communication, and the effects of this are seen throughout my life in the past year and a half. I have accomplished things I never would have dreamed of before, such as becoming the president of my 4-H club, participating on a musical on stage, and even speaking here today. In addition, not only do I feel more confident when speaking in public, I also feel more at ease to express my thoughts, ideas, and even to lead others. I have personally been changed from learning the process of simply communicating, and now I want to help other teens learn how to effectively communicate as well. As a part of the future generation of America, I believe there needs to be a change. If we want to progress as a country, the future generation of America needs to be able to effectively communicate and not fear it. We cannot and should not rely on technology to do this for us. Here are just a few examples of how communication is needed outside of a speech class. Suppose a student is sitting in a math class and the teacher is introducing a new concept to the class today. However, this specific young man is having a hard time grasping the concept. Unfortunately, he doesn't understand how to effectively communicate and he's embarrassed to speak out amongst a group. Thus, he resorts to saying, I hate math, Math is dumb. See, the problem here is a lack of effective communication and confidence to speak out amongst the group. If the boy had known how to effectively com communicate, he could have notified the teacher that he doesn't understand and the problem would have been resolved. Then that young man might grow up to become an engineer where he works with math consistently and his communication skills would have definitely helped him along the way. Another example is a girl who was bullied and teased at school. She comes home and her mom says, how was school? She shrugs it off with an abrupt spine, thus concealing her true emotions from her mother. This goes on for several years until she's a teen and can't handle it anymore. So she turns to drugs as her escape and becomes another average high school dropout. In this situation, the problem could have been avoided at a young age had the girl known how to effectively communicate, she could have told her mom that she is being bullied and possibly gotten help at a young age, which would dramatically reduce the chance of her turning to drugs as an adolescent. Now, I would like to propose to you an idea which will help with this problem. Don't worry, I'm not going to say ban Facebook texting and Twitter. What I believe may be a helpful solution. My solution would be that high schools implement a required effective communications class. I know that currently most high schools require at least one semester of speech, but that's not what we're talking about here. We are talking about simply communicating. How can we expect high school age students to do well in a speech class when most of them can't even communicate properly to their parents? I believe that through this class, students will be able to effectively and comfortably communicate whatever they need or want to. This class will teach students how to communicate to people without feeling nervous. It should be a time where students can really reach out and make connections with other classmates and teachers. The goal of this class is to help students overcome issues they are faced with by learning the tools of effective communication. Now that I have shared with you my idea of implementing a required effective communications course for high school age students, I would now like to address a few questions or objections that might come to mind. First off, who would teach this class? The teachers would have to have a previous background in working with youth and possibly a degree in counseling or communications. However, most importantly, they must have a heart in working with youth to overcome 
issues, or problems they are faced with by learning the tools of effective communication. What will the teachers actually teach the students? The teachers will introduce students to the method of communicating effectively while tackling the various fears of speaking privately or publicly. Another objection might be the issue of workload. One might say a high school age student has enough homework on their plate and does not need one more class added to that. However, this class will have a minimum of light to no homework. It should really be a time where students can reach out and make connections with other classmates and teachers and not have to worry or stress about their homework getting completed on time. Many times, I have heard adults use the phrase, communication is key. Now that I'm older, I really see the full meaning of that small little phrase. Communication is key. It's the key to the future generation of America. And what's a key if you don't know how to use it or don't even know what it unlocks? Out of all the topics I could have chose, I chose effective communication. Why? Because it matters to me. I have personally been changed from it, and it concerns me when I see teenagers overdosing on drugs, getting pregnant at 15, at risk of obesity, and contemplating suicide. I urge you to help me with this because one voice can make a difference. And together, we can help stop that girl from cutting herself. And maybe later in life, she'll become a nurse and a mom to two beautiful girls. And she could very well be your niece, your granddaughter, or the happy little girl who lives across the street. And the boy who is teased about his weight will finally be able to communicate why he turns to food and what's really hurting him, then he may grow up to become a personal trainer and the strong father of a family. This young man could very well be your nephew or your grandson or your friend's son, but through communication, one voice in a city of pain can be heard and a new door can be opened. Thank you.